Hello my fellow spuds and welcome back to another episode of The Sapling. So sorry it's been such a long time, I've actually tried to record this about four or five times now and every time something has gone wrong so I apologise for how long it's been. But today we're going to be playing on the sandbox mode which I've actually been really excited to show on camera. We're going to be making a couple of different plants just to begin with, we'll make this basic one right now, we'll put some random fruit around the bottom of it. Uh, the more fruit, the better, really. Chuck a couple of leaves on here. Some to harvest as much light as possible, really. That'll do for the time being. Chuck a few of them on there. There will do. We'll lower it down by one. Hey, presto. Boom. That's energy used. Tiny bit. Loads of energy profit. And we get lots of fruit, so that'll be good. We could add a few other adaptations to this. So, for example, we could add a flower, which enables wind pollination. Let's do that. There we go. And that should help it spread a little bit further. We get a fair amount of sunlight from the stems. We get a hell of a lot of it from the leaves. We get quite a lot of it from the roots. Probably keep it about average for the time being. Make it a little bit wider. And that should be fine. It's not particularly resistant to anything, but it should be okay. Okay. Right. So first of all, this is the map. Um, I will go through it in more detail in just a second. But for right now, let's just plant some of these dotted around the bits so we can actually plant it. And that should be fine. This is the map. So if we go into the groups here, we can see where the shallow water is, where the deep water is. And as you can see, there are pockets and it gets deeper and deeper as it goes along. And here, deep groundwater, we've got pockets here, here and here. Softness is it's soft apart from these bits where it's ridiculously hard. I suppose they're meant to be mountains. Temperature is the interesting thing. The temperature goes really hot in the middle and it gets to cold on the outside. Uh, wind is interesting because it's, again, Wind is really strong over here, fairly weak over here. So it's interesting is you can plant all different types of things, all types of different little ecosystems going on on this fairly small map. So what we could do is we could make a new plant species from scratch. And then what we'll do is we'll have this so that this can only really be used in the cold. Actually, no, let's do the hot. Let's do the hot. Yeah, lots of stuff from that, lots of stuff from that. It goes to 60. That should be fine. Let's go from there. So this one should be able to be planted, there we go, right bangs back in the middle, which the other ones couldn't go to. So if we just chuck a few around here, we've got two different plants suited to two different climates, and they should work really well. So, ready, go. What the interesting thing is with this is that we can turn on or off random mutations. So what we can then do is we can jump skip time. So now, we've had random mutations on, we've skipped time all that time, and we can have a look and see what our plants are looking like. As you can see, our plants are spread all over the map. We've got some with bark, some without. Some of the bark has actually gone over to here. So clearly these ones that didn't have bark before, I think, have just changed. Yeah, so one of the early adaptations they seem to have done is also inherited bark, the ones that didn't have bark. And some of the ones that did have bark seem to have developed without bark. So it's, that's just a random mutation. Some of them look a bit bulbous, some of them don't. If we go to our mutate different species, we can see all the different species that we've had over the last 300 years, some that have died, some that haven't, the ones that are still going. So as you can see, we've had all sorts. Some have different flowers, some have branches. And it's just incredibly cool just to go through and see the different stuff that natural selection has been able to keep growing and some that hasn't. It's just the Waldo is the clear winner and the Wiltis. Those two are clearly the clear winners. The rest are probably just dying off or just starting to develop themselves. So it's probably about time that we added some actual animals to this. What we'll probably do, just to show off the mutation aspect, is we're going to give it the most basic stuff. So currently it's going to just be basic, basic, basic. Most basic mouth, the most basic nose. We'll give it some ears, we'll give it some eyes. We've got tummy eyes, there we go. But we'll change its colour. So this will currently be green, bright green, so we can see it. We are going to give it... We're going to keep it fairly plain. Apparently its legs don't touch the ground. There we go, now they do. Okay, so it's a fairly long boy. That'll do. You can only live in these little strips. Put a couple there and a couple there. And this will be interesting to see how they evolve. Whether some will actually go into the middle, some will go in the outskirts. So the ones over here are probably going to starve fairly quickly. There is no plants around there to eat. However, the ones over here are going to do pretty well. They're going to have a whale of a time over here. Look at them. He's incredibly hungry. Oh, look. The <laughs> plant just sprung right up his ass. <laughs> right, okay. So... They're going to have a whale of a time. But what we're going to do now is just skip ahead 300 years and we'll see what happens. So here we go. Do we still have any creatures alive? Is that some alive creatures? It is. They've survived 300 years just like that. They haven't changed much at all. We've only got a few. We've got nine of this one, the Doing, the Greater Doing, the Verpud, and the Chopand. 
Right, we don't have many of them though. They haven't done particularly well. Uh, none of them have evolved particularly. This one has got some different feet. Some of them seem a little bit longer, some of them seem a bit shorter, but nothing much has really happened. If we fast forward another 300 years, I'm guessing most of them will probably be dead. No, they're not. Oh, and we got some weird ones. Look at that. <laughs> that one's gone really skinny. That one's about normal. But yeah, we've got some weird different stuff going on. So most of the ones have died out, the doing and the grace doing have done, but the Voperd for some reason has actually thrived. We've got a needle, we've got a grape of Voperd, and we've got the Weiro, which has actually changed colour. Let's have a look at the Weirpo. Yeah, this one's got rid of its normal eyes and it seems to replace it with better eyes. It also seems to have developed fur, which is interesting. So yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. And what we can do is basically just keep spamming this. We can spam this for a while and we'll see what happens. And each one of these jumps simulates if you kept it running for five years solid. So I've clicked this a number of times. Right, we're currently in the year three millennia. I don't know if we've got any species left at all. We do, we've actually got quite a lot. And look at the trees. Oh, look how much they've changed. That's incredible. <laughs> they've got really tall. Some have got really bubbles. Look, some of them have got bigger. This one's changed color. That one's, is it scales that one's got or something? That one's got fur. Oh, that one's got, <laughs> what is going on? They've got little, they've got little arms on their bum and then feet on the front, right? And it looks like basically every aspect of them has evolved in some way, shape or form. A weirdly apart from the eyes, very natural selection just likes their eyes, just being basic. That's, that's fine. They've clearly thrived in that part of the map. I want to see over here if there's anything going on over here. Right, well clearly there seems to be more bark stuff over here on the top side of the map. Uh, the trees are a little bit different. We've got some branched stuff over here, which is interesting that the branches seem to have evolved on this side of the map and not the other side. All along this top section seems to be lots of branches, which is very, very cool. However, what's weird is that we don't seem to have many animals at all on this side. All the animals seem to just be in that one section of the map. Let's have a little look at the different stuff we've got going on. 52 Hotar, two Wallocks. <laughs> uh, oh no, we've got 49. These are the ones that seem to be the predominant species <laughs> for some reason. Like, why would they be the predominant species? I've got absolutely no idea. But you can see the amount that stuff evolved. So all the colors that are changed, they got bird feet, they got different eyes. It went through a lot of different creatures before it ended up on the ones that we've currently got. It's interesting to see the different stuff that's clearly still evolving where we have a couple of ones that have just clearly branched off recently. Let's fast forward a little bit more and I think after we've done that what we'll do is we'll create our own species, introduce it and then see what that does for the ecosystem. Stuff has changed once again. The trees have gone all weird. They seem to have gone zigzagged. They're still fundamentally the same however they've just gone a little bit well pear shaped is probably the right word seeing as they seem to just all be growing pears. And we've got some interesting stuff. So stuff's developed again. What is this little thing? This one seems to have gills or attempting to have gills. We've got all sorts going on. We've got the really, really tiny ones. We've got some much bigger ones. This is very cool. We st these are still going strong, <laughs> these things. But everything is still very predominantly green, which is really interesting. When I've done this before, stuff has changed color really drastically. This one, it seems to be fairly basic, apart from a couple of little blue ones seem to be running around over there. Most of them still seems to be green. Oh, look at that thing. <laughs> it's just got bigger eyes and it's only got two legs. Oh, they've got a few of them. That's interesting that they're actually thriving in a world where everything else has four legs. But they seem to be doing better up on the hill. Maybe their legs are better suited for this sort of thing, I don't know. Don't know what's going on with these ones. I think the less said about them, the better. So what we're going to do now, before we actually make our own little little thing is we can on this we can actually edit stuff if i go to here is i can change the temperature i can lower it by t uh, however much i want i can raise it by however much i want and what i can do is if i lowered it a little bit we'll lower it by say eight degrees we'll fast forward time by 300 years we'll see what happens everything seems to have jumped a little bit to the left i don't know if you saw that the center actually because it's so hot has actually cooled down a little bit whereas the outskirts a bit too cold for stuff to live well, what we'll do now is we'll introduce our own species now. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a little bird bird thing. There we go. Uh, we'll give it some little legs. We'll give it some little wings so it can actually fly. What we're going to do is we're going to give it feathers. There we go. Let's make it a blue. Yeah, like a, a deep blue. There we go. Give it that pattern. There we go. Here we go. We'll give it we'll give it a beak. We want one that probably eats meat. There doesn't seem to be many carnivores at the moment. I think it'd be good to introduce one. So this is going to be like apex predator style. And if we make that a bit bigger, oh, <laughs> bulky thing. <laughs> How is that meant to fly? Can we make it a little bit longer. 
have a bit of a tail raise it up a little bit and there we go we've got this uh weird bird thing that looks incredible instincts we're going to want new instinct we're going to if you see choose the color of existing species we're going to go for animals we go for say if we go to that color we will go towards it we'll just leave that we'll leave it as it is i think that's pretty good going uh we will also give it some ears i think ears would be good for it attack might be quite nice so it's got these little horns and it's ready to go so here we go so our creature can only live in these two planes here and here here is perfect because that's where most of our creatures are already living we'll chuck a few around here we'll chuck a few up here in the middle we'll chuck a few out over here just in case because they can actually fly so hopefully they will uh yeah they they will they will take part so now we've got this completely different species with all these other ones this is completely new completely unlike everything else just been introduced to the ecosystem we will see how much it wrecks everything completely oh it looks back <laughs> look at it just hiding in the trees oh there we go all right let's jump towards the meat it's clearly working well it might just become a scavenger for a little bit of time just picking off all the meat because currently there isn't much carnivores by the look of it there's, i think there's a couple but this might just pick off all the meat that's left around lying on the floor but we will see if these things actually survive be interesting to see if they actually decide that they're going to uh contribute or not they might just completely die out be out competed by the other things they haven't had five millennia to evolve so who knows but we'll skip 300 years and see what happens okay we do have a couple of them we still got some so that means they are they are well they might not be thriving but they are still alive just something we've got uh one two there we've got any more we've got one there we've got any up here is the question it doesn't look like it look how many species we've got through christ okay all sorts of weirdness okay here we go so we've got three oolong they've actually evolved already had a few other ones that have died out so it hasn't been long and that we've got a lot of different types of species going on oh, we've got one that looks like it's got saber tooth that's quite cool what we'll do we've only actually got three of our species left alive so chances are they're not going to live that much longer uh, we might get lucky they might thrive just as the group they might evolve into something else but it looks like um our species have either been out competed or they're just not doing as well as we thought they've evolved to if you feel too warm glow that's really weird that it's done that it's also changed if you see purple go towards it that's that's it evolved to do that completely which means it's better at breeding which is really good although it has kept it if you see meat go towards it which is exciting right so we've got this this is slightly different color actually so its instincts are if you see an animal of that color go towards it however it's um it's not really accurate because it's it, the color has actually changed so it's kept the trait from when it's for its original color which is more of a purple it's changed to more of a blue and um it's still going towards the wrong color so we'll correct that slightly so it is the color of the species that's currently alive what we'll do is if we see uh if we see the color do that color because it looks about right then we will attack it if close we'll add that one as well and that should help it survive a little bit right so it's, it's barely any different but we'll see if this little behavior change actually makes it live any longer right here we go chuck a few of these down up here chuck a few of them down over here what we're gonna do is we're gonna fast forward by i guess around the year eight mil will be a decent figure to see okay actually it's the year seven million or just before and i don't see many of our little birdie friends actually at all i don't see any of them so i think they might have just died out oh no hang on here we go we do we've got some it's been like one and a half million years so it looks like it's a little bit different but actually they seem to have thrived a bit better up here doesn't look like there's many of them but they are the apex predator so chances are there's not going to be that many look at this it just looks like a giant cucumber on legs that's amazing it's, they're jumping away oh brilliant this is great i love this so much this is so so much fun just to play around and simulate all this and just the weirdness that has come about especially from the plants which you don't expect and they look awesome letting the plants actually naturally make themselves they look so much better and more natural in a weird way than i think you can just make yourself unless you spent a lot of time doing it right then so 
now that we've done that let's just create a whole new ecosystem do something completely different so i think clearly the more simple the organism the better it is at surviving so what we'll do is we'll chuck some of these down just as they are there we go and then we'll chuck a couple of leaves on it that'd be good uh minus 30 will do there we go brilliant we've got loads of energy profit loads of fruit bet you have loads and loads of babies excellent we'll chuck loads along here and we'll chuck loads along here and what we're going to do to change it up a little bit is we're going to lower the temperature by 30 degrees that might just kill all of them outright but we'll see what happens there we go as you can see it's all drifted from the sides back into the middle and if we do it a little bit further as you can see now everything is in the center if we go to temperature it is now too cold it gets to minus 74 degrees at the edges so clearly <laughs> the bit in the center is the way to be bang smack in the center is zero degrees basically nothing can really survive past that yeah minus 30 exactly so the green area is basically the coldest that these organisms can live but right, now that all those plants are kind of settled let's make some creatures then so the thing what we'll do is we will uh make these completely different to before we'll make them these weird little bipod things like that weird little beak thing that's already terrifying oh it looks like an actual beak thing from kenji that's a uh, Sure, let's make a beat thing from Kenji. Why not? There we go. Uh, for those of you who don't know Kenji, it is a scary, scary creature that uh, eats everything. It's absolutely terrifying. Right, okay, there we go. We've got this weird beak thing. There we go. Hello, Mr. Beak thing. We'll give you some creepy, creepy eyes. There we go. Um, the problem is, though, that most of our plants are actually fairly small. So we're probably not going to want to have you that high up off the ground right now. There we go. Just for the time being, we'll lower you down a little bit so you can actually eat most of the plants. That's fine. We're going to want to give you some traits. You're going to have to have fur to give you some protection from the cold. Make you a little bit stripy. Get you a little bit red. I think that's fine with me. What should we do? Should we do a little, little bunny ears? Sure, bunny ears. <laughs> That'll do. Uh, a little glow. We'll do instincts. If you see a light in the dark, go towards it. I'll we'll just leave it like that for the time being. That's fairly simple. We've got a little light on it. That's all fine. Now let's get rid of the ears and we'll place it with these weird hooter things. There we go. And this should be able to live right bang smack in the middle with everything else. Lovely. Place a couple of them down there. A couple over here. Now we've got random mutations on. We can see what the difference is going to be between those either side of the lake. Right. It's currently on the year three millennia. And as you can see, oh my God, these have changed a lot. <laughs> Look at what is going on. Its eyes are evolved into mouths. Um, it's got six legs. Uh, apparently, there's so much food to go around, it doesn't actually need eyes anymore. <laughs> it doesn't need to see what it's doing. It's just... Does it still have ears? Uh, I think they do still have ears, technically. They're just a little bit hidden. So, actually, these ones on this side seem to just have... They just, they just listen to things now. They don't bother looking at anything. That's terrifying. We'll go to the other side, see if anything is living over here. It is. Oh my god, they're completely different. These ones have eyes, <laughs> which is what I was expecting, to be honest. We've got all sorts of variety over here. Some of different colours, different mouths. Yeah, so these have really evolved and kind of just taken shape a lot more. But these animals seem to have thrived a lot. There are a lot of them. Christ, and there's all sorts of different species in this. Like these ones. What is going on with these? I've got no idea um they seem to have oh they've got extra mouths they do have three mouths they've got them on their necks okay so clearly the three mouth thing is a is a prominent thing in this in this little world's evolution which is bizarre these ones seem fairly normal like i made them some seem quite a lot bigger right okay that's so weird that's bizarre that's how that's how different evolution can get if you just have a border between them that's so weird because this all seems like basically one species. I think there's a couple of differences, but they're basically the same. Like, I think most of... there's a Yeah, there's a couple with slightly different colours, but all of them seem to have three mouths. All of them seem to have six legs. All have a glow on their backs. That's really, really weird. But yeah. Anyway, guys. That, that sandbox for you, that's the sapling. So what I can do is, actually, I could... Uh, I could increase the temperature a little bit. I don't know. Uh to 20 or raise it by 30 degrees see what happens trees will probably explode that way there we go <laughs> the animals do as well actually most of these ones seem to have died out oh the poor little six-legged ones that's very very cool uh let's raise temperature a little bit more there we go it shifted once again all the animals seem to have died off on that side 
Okay, let's raise temperature again. Okay, well, they seem to still seem to be thriving. It's just kind of gone either side further and further. And the six-legged ones are back. They uh, they took a break, but apparently they evolved back into what they used to be. Okay, that's uh, that's so weird. Fine, uh, raise temperature a bit more. Oh, look at that, the leaves have changed. Because the other leaves couldn't survive. Actually, some plants managed to evolve their leaves, and now they're thriving. Okay, clearly six-legged ones are going pretty strong, so are the four-legged ones. Let's go over here, see what's going on over here. Oh, completely different plants, completely different leaves. Toucans. Two-legged, three-headed toucans. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, that's a really... Oh, it's a big, fat toucan. Hello, big, fat toucan. Okay, so toucan, toucan head seems to be quite prominent over here, so does two-legged. But four-legged does seem to be taking off as well. So you can do all sorts of weird stuff with this game. Like, all sorts of stuff. If I raise this probably by another 20 degrees, I think everything will die. But we'll see. Uh, yeah, everything on that side has died. All the animals have died. So only some of these plants have kept going. And that's only because of this particular type of leaf. So this leaf was clearly the way forward. The ones over there just didn't stand a chance. So it's really interesting to see how what you can do with this game. You can have stuff completely die out. You can have stuff completely come back. You can have weird, weird mutations happen, stuff you didn't expect. I've had ones where you, I tried pollinating flowers and you had worlds where all the plants had different colored flowers. You had white flowers, red flowers, all sorts of stuff evolved. And they only glowed at night, which was awesome. So you can, you can do all sorts of stuff with this game, which just makes it incredible. And I love the fact that just you can have it evolve itself. You can just let it run see what happens in the future you could just keep this going you could let you could keep plants growing and animals going for hundreds of millennia and just see what happens and i think that's awesome that you can do that simulate that amount of time and see what happens to evolution because evolution doesn't sometimes make sense the three-headed toucans living alongside fat-headed weirdness or <laughs> or weird just weird weird stuff and i think it's just awesome that this game simulates the weirdness that is evolution and i love it so much so thank you so much guys for watching i hope you've enjoyed the episode it's been really really fun just getting stuck into sandbox yeah and just really exploring everything you can do you can you can design your own creatures like i did originally and you can try and simulate perfect ecosystems and have all the different animals you've ever wanted living alongside each other but sometimes evolution doesn't work like that and sometimes half the stuff you make dies out and half the stuff lives or stuff changes drastically and ends up getting three toucan heads and getting really fat. But I hope you enjoyed watching. Massive thanks to all my patrons. Seth, Pet Over, Seth, Drew, Clint, David, Aaron, Dale, Mikhail, Emma, DeBlog, Rai, Kalara, Daniel, Dama, Len, Wolf, AJ, Andrew, Mitch, Alex, MBH, Nexus, Law Me Lord, and T Chaos. Thank you so much, guys. You guys are just incredible. Just, I can't thank you guys enough, so just thank you. Yeah, this is the sapling. It's, uh, it's amazing. I really encourage you to just kind of get the game, have a little play around, see what you can do. It's really, really cool, and I haven't really come across another game like it. It's, it's just incredible, so I really, really just strongly encourage you to just play around with it, see what you can do, see what weird, wacky creations you can come up with. It is awesome. So thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye-bye.